Okay, so I used Clear OS and I was going to fire that up as my Active Directory server. Um, there's some plugins for it that worked really well in the past. It was uh, Open Samba uh, version 3. Point something. They haven't updated that to version 4. In fact, they've removed it altogether. So what I'm going to do now is I've already filmed that and set that up. I'm probably going to use ClearOS as the mail server though. So I've already done the install process and I will use that in a later date, that footage to show how you go about installing the ClearOS system. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use the cockpit built in to the Fedora server and through that I'm going to enable my Active Directory uh, and domain system. So I just thought I would do a slight update here and let you know that I had to correct myself because the tools I was going to use that I've used in the past are not available anymore. So I'm going to go the new method and I am going to do that whole part through cockpit. So I'll get on to that next. <laughs> So here we are back in Proxmox and what we're going to do is we are going to fire up another VM. So previously what we did was we fired up, open that up there, we fired up our Proxmox and our Proxmox backup and we fired up our, our local VM which was AD Clear OS. However, as I previously stated, uh, the Active Directory part of ClearOS that I was going to use isn't there anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to fire up a new virtual server and what we're going to do in there is we are going to make it a Fedora machine and then we're going to install Cockpit and we're going to install Cockpit's version of Active Directory Controller which I believe is a Samba 4 based. I'm not 100% though. So again, you go up to the top, create a virtual machine we are going to make it on the Proxmox 1 node, VM 101, uh, because VM 100 was our Active Directory machine. We're not actually going to use VM 101. I'm going to use VM 110. I'm uh, using spacing in between, and I will go up by increments of 10. This is going to be cockpit. AD1 Maybe I'm going to actually change that out and use smaller letters for cockpit and then just have AD1 large. Alright Next Storage It's going to be in the VMs We're going to use This is where we're getting the disk image from we're going to get it from our ISOs directory, which in a previous video I set these directories up as independent drives. We're going to look into here. There's our Fedora server. Linux, kernel, that's fine. Next. Graphic card, we're leaving it all. This is default. There's nothing in here we need to change. Next. Disks. We are going to go storage, VM, disk gigabyte size. We're not going to need it that big. However, I want to go larger than 32 gigs because I do want to be using Cockpit to create ISOs later on as well. So I'm going to make that disk size 100 gigs. No cache. Next. We're going to assign two cores. One socket. Next. And we're going to go with 4096. Should be adequate. We're going to use the existing bridge. That's fine. Next. Finish. Now we built that VM. And then when we come back, we're going to be uh, going through. We'll take care of all the updates and install copy. Okay, so we're just booting into the installer here for Fedora. We set up the VM and moved ahead. We're just waiting for this to come up and we're going to try and run through this pretty quick here. 
it's pretty much just a typical Linux installer. So any second now, it should pop on the screen. There we go. So English, English United States. That's fine. Scroll down. Continue. There we go. Then we're going to go in here and we're going to set our date and time. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn off network time because I can't see it right now. But we're going to go AM PM and we're going to go down here to Vancouver. America is Vancouver. Perfect because I'm in Canada. And then we're going to go, I think I just have to go up here. Yep, up, done. Perfect. Uh, we will sync that at a later time. I probably won't show it on screen. Not a big deal. Uh, but I don't have that set up right now. So um, we're going to enable the root account. And we're going to allow root SSH login with password. Internal network again, doesn't get to the outside world. Shh, no issues enabling the SSH. Now, if you do enable SSH and have it on the outside world, stay on top of your updates and make sure your firewall is in place. And make sure your external firewall is probably blocking the SSH from outside so that you got a VPN in order to get it. So just make sure you take care of all your security steps. Now we're gonna move ahead to setting up the drive. This may or may not work. Fedora has issues sometimes with these QME hard drives. So I'm just gonna tell it to go automatic and see if it likes it. If it doesn't, I've got to, uh, yeah, it didn't like it. So I'm gonna to have to make some changes to the disc. I'm gonna pause the recording and then I'll come back. But basically what I gotta do is I gotta go in here and then I've gotta go and uh, manage this disc extra at this GUI level. So I'll take care of that. You don't really need to see it, but it's to do with the QME, U, Q, QME, U that um, Proxbox uses for doing its snapshots. Um, I basically just have to tell it to do it again. In a um, Debian environment or an Ubuntu environment, it doesn't really have a problem with that. It sees it, but the, for whatever reason, the Fedora, I've got to format that disk pre, then tell it where to go and I should be good. So I'm just going to pause and I'll come right back after doing that. All right, I've done that, and now it's ready to go. Basically, I click on Begin Install, and it is going to create the disk, get the label ready to rock and roll, get all the files onto there. So once that is done, I'll just need to reboot the system and down here, and then we should be able to boot back in, back in, and I can set up the IP address and then pull the cockpit interface up in a web browser. So I'm going to come back to you when I do that. You've seen me in other videos change the um, IP address before, so I don't really need to, to waste your time with that here. And there's plenty of research on the internet how to do it. Basically, you just sudo nano into a, uh, a network config file, and from there you just change the IP to static. And then from there, you just change to what you want it to be and save it. Or if you, you might have to do it in a YAML file or whatever. There's, there's different ways to do it in different operating systems. Anyway, you've seen it before. I don't need to go into that. I'll be back when we're ready to move on to the cockpit side. All right, just logged back in now after changing the name and getting the IP statically set. So we're now with uh, 192.168.9. You enter in by going to port 9090, and then you log in with the password you set up during the install process. So this is what the cockpit GUI looks like. So now that we've got cockpit installed, what we're going to do now for the rest of this video is we're simply going to get it updated, and then we're going to add some applications to it. So it automatically goes, checks for the um, package updates and downloads those. So uh, once it finishes that, we are going to just simply add the applications that we want and we will be good to roll. 
Uh, I'm going to pause it here until the updates are done because it might take some time to get all the packages it needs. I'm not entirely certain and we will come back. Alright, so I've done next. I've come in here, I've clicked on applications and I clicked the uh, checking for new applications button. It's taking a little bit. The updates is finished and then I also went into software updates and I scheduled it just to check for updates, security updates only, uh, every Monday at 5 a.m. So there's nothing fancy there, you know, just to pull out and click down so you didn't miss anything. Now, as soon as this finishes, it's going to show us the new applications that are available for us. And we're going to go ahead and add a couple of those. And that will get us set up with, um, hopefully, What's shown in the list is the Active Directory that we want and also the uh, Builder app because we want to be able to build custom images and custom recipes to push out to machines on the network and in the um, Active Directory. So as soon as this finishes, hopefully those are available. There we are. So 389 Directory Server. We're going to go ahead and install that. That'll take a second. You can see down here, Fleet Commander is also there in the list. Image Builder is also in the list. Um, you can do virtual machines in here, which if I wasn't running Proxmox, as I think I said in the Proxmox video to start this whole um, session off or playlist off, that you could run your virtual machines in Cockpit as well. Uh, and you could run your containers in Cockpit as well. However, I have not chosen to do that because I wanted the Proxmox backup options available to me. Uh, internal network only. I'm not going to run the enhanced uh, security. Now, there are some issues with this if you do choose to run it. There are some things that don't play nice with it. So just be aware of that if you decide you want to run the enhanced uh, Linux security session. Um, you can also record sessions. This is primarily used in an environment where you have multiple people using it and if something goes wrong or somebody pushes something out, you can use it for tracking. Um, not really for, say, a reprimanding or anything like that, but more of being able to reverse engineer the changes that went and fix the problems that happened. So that is uh, definitely something that can be done, but it can also be misused. So directory server is installed, it's over here. Now we're going to install Fleet Commander. That'll take a minute. And Fleet Commander is a good way to push out updates and changes, I don't know, desktop background, programs, whatever you want to um, your fleet of machines. So pretty much exactly what it says it is. It's almost done. Come on, finish up. And next I want to install Image Builder. And this is for building custom deployment images and also deploy other operating system images. Uh, I'm not entirely certain how to make that work, although I've been told that people have done it. Uh, I'm pretty much going to stick to just using Fedora with it, I think, until I get to play around with it a little more, but we'll see from here. I'm a little bit rusty, so... Yeah, I think that's probably all I'm going to install. For now, I could install the diagnostic reports, but I haven't got my mail server set up, so I can come back and do that afterwards. As I said before, my clear OSAD, I'm going to be renaming that and removing uh, some of the things I put on it and using that as my mail server, hopefully. Who knows, I may be installing another Fedora uh, server and using that. But I want to try and stay away from 
installing any Ubuntu based and try and keep this as a Fedora rollout across the board using the RHEL. Alright, so what we're going to do now that uh, Image Builder, Fleet Commander, and 389 Directory Server have been installed, we're going to click into 389 Directory Server. Now we're going to click on Create New Instance. We're going to call it Pause. We're going to come down here, set the passwords up. come down here a little further and we want to create the database it wants a value that is a valid domain name so DC equals company comma DC equals com I'm gonna go DC equals pause comma DC equals local All right, database name, we're going to Haas. We're going to initialize this database. We're going to create suffix entries. Everything should be ready to go. Create instance. Give that a minute here. Perfect. Successfully created instance. So we're good to go. Now, it's not going to look like the Microsoft RSAT accounting in here. It's got its own look. Um, obviously, they probably get sued if they use the Microsoft one. However, uh, you can configure everything through here. So account, alias. Um, all these things, all these OUs and things are listed in here uh, under the schema. So there's all sorts of other things you can do here. However, this is pretty much where we're going to leave this for right now. And it's now been installed and I'll do a video how I set it up and how I'm going to set it up for organization and things. I may end up connecting through the RSAT tools. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. I'll... Uh, figure all that out before I start making the video so I'm not figuring it out on the fly for you. But I'm going to end it here because we have our Active Directory installed with our haws.local domain and it is in cockpit and it is ready to roll. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.